your reaction at the news that the White House is planning this pretty revolutionary move when it comes to resettlement? I'm thrilled. Uh, this is exactly what is needed. I've been asking the White House personally to do this now for several weeks. Um, I've learned through my years of experience in resettling these Afghans and Iraqis that come to the United States under the Special Immigration Visa Program that the key to that success, the key to them not ending up in endemic poverty is being paired with a U.S. military veteran as early in their resettlement process as we possibly can. This is absolutely what is needed at this time. And what's your thinking behind that? Is this just because of the relationships that veterans like you have built with these uh, these men and, and then, of course, their families? Or is this broadly about how you understand resettlement in the U.S. to be? It, it, it's not necessarily um, a happy process for some. Yeah, no. So this, let's be clear. This is all about the shared experience that men and women of the United States military have had with the men and women of Afghanistan and Iraq, right? There's nothing more powerful than that bond of having shared, in particular, combat. Uh, and that it's not just our military, it's our frontline civilians, the aid workers, the diplomats, um, you know, who also were out there working shoulder to shoulder with these people facing the same dangers. These are the people now that are going to be best suited to help them resettle here for a couple of reasons. In that shared experience, we learned firsthand how they welcomed us into their culture and their country when we were complete strangers. Well, the process is now completely flipped, right? It's our turn to welcome them to our country. Well, they're going to be complete strangers. And because we have that shared experience, we have a level of trust that no one else in the country is going to be able to have with these people, which means we can have some of the more difficult conversations that need to be had, such as telling the men, hey, I know culturally you might not educate your women over there, but here you're going to have to. You shouldn't limit your household earning potential to just 50% of the adults in the household. And more importantly, if God forbid something happens to you, you need your spouse to be able to call 911 and be able to communicate with the world around her to take care of your family if you can't yourself. These people also are going to look to us just from their cultural standpoint as ambassadors of our culture. And they're going to be more apt to listen to us as a result of that. So there's a lot of reasons why we should be at the forefront of this. I'm really glad that the White House has listened, and I'm eager to get started. Uh, is the veteran community behind you on this? Do you think there's going to be a mass opening of doors of homes? Yeah, no, we've been, we've been clamoring for this. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm proud to work with the Iraq and Afghan veterans of America specifically on this issue. We've been now for the last couple of weeks uh, trying to build a coalition amongst other veterans organizations to prepare them for this. Uh, the feedback that I've had from those meetings with other veterans organizations has just been overwhelmingly positive. Um, people are eager to assist these people because we don't just see them as immigrants or as refugees. We see them as fellow veterans. Let's be very clear. When I came home from my one tour of duty, my war ended. The interpreter who saved my life went on to the next unit and the next mission. And he did that over and over and over again. The only difference between him and I that I really know about is where we placed in the birth lottery. The only, that's the only difference, by the way, that anyone seems to care about. What I care about is what he's done with his life. And he served nine tours of duty. You know, I consider him, if anything, to be the real veteran in this relationship. And I know a lot of other veterans who feel the same way about their interpreter. Um, we are eager to now take care of them in, again, the way that they took care of us. What is some of the feedback you're having from many of these Afghans who are already on American soil but, but are on army bases at the moment? They're eager to get off those army bases. You know, they, the, the conditions vary from base to base. Most of them are in, are in barracks housing, and they've, they're, they're making do. A lot of them are very thankful um, to be receiving their first three hot meals a day ever in their entire life. Um, they're all just overwhelmingly thankful to the American people, and particularly the American military, for getting them out of Afghanistan and getting them to safety. But every single person that I've met with in my base visits, and now I've, I've been to Fort Dix, Quantico, Fort Lee, Fort Pickett, I'm trying to get to all of them before this is done. The overwhelming sentiment, it's universal. Every single person I talk to after thanking me and telling the American people, thank you for getting them to safety, then want to talk to me about their relatives who are left behind and still in danger. 
and that is the thing that I, I fear that, you know, the greater veteran community is going to be working on for the rest of our lives is getting that some 175,000 people that we estimate were left behind in the evacuation and still need our assistance. And that's again why it's so powerful to start pairing veterans up with this community now, because there is a moral injury that's already been suffered by leaving those people behind. And I've argued very, very, for a very long time that the best way to overcome that moral injury, to try to treat it and assess it, is to assist people in resettling here in the United States. The most healing thing I've ever done from coming home from the war, full stop, has been helping this community come and resettle in my country and become our newest and proudest Americans. And every time I have opened and welcomed other veterans into that opportunity, they share that same sentiment, that this is the most healing thing that they've done since they've come home from the war. I hope that in helping one another, what I've also learned is that the Afghans seem to somewhat heal themselves. And that's what I'm hoping we can help them do because while they're very thankful to be here, they're suffering profound trauma, particularly survivor's guilt because they've left family members behind. And until we get those family members here and safe with them, I, I honestly can tell you that I don't think they're ever gonna truly feel like their war is over. It's just the beginning of another part of their life. Um, Major Matt Zeller, really appreciate you joining us here at CNN. Also, thanks so much for all the work you've done so far. Thanks for having me. It's an honor to be here. Well, the kidnapping of 17 missionaries in Haiti has captured their